Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In today's video, we are going to talk about QoS or Network Traffic Control and SQM. Alright, so actually I am planning to do a video on QoS setup. However, according to our documentation from here, SQM frequently performs better in all cases, upload and download. And it also helps to eliminate buffer blood. That's why in this video, we are focused on SQM and by following this video, you will set up your SQM on the routers to control the traffic. And the basic explanation about SQM is a combination of packet scheduling and active queue land management. So imagine you are on a highway. So we have a lot of cars moving on the road and we have some car going very fast some car going very slow and then what happens if there are a lot of car on the road and they try to enter the same exit or the same gate then we will have traffic tram we need a police or a system to control the car to prioritize which one should go first which one should go second so that the road can be smooth and the same for our network so let's say you have the package. It is going from your smartphone, your smart TV, your uh, game consoles, your PC to the routers. And after that, it is going out to the internet via the one port. And at this time, we have in the network, the package jam, or we call it bottleneck or throttle. So this is where we need to use SQM to solve our problem. All right. So this is the very basic concept of SQM or QoS and let's move to the next step. For this tutorial, I will be using the D-Link DIR-A42C2. So first of all, make sure you are on the stable release. Else, if you are on the snapshot version, make sure you update the firmware to the latest. Alright, let's go to system, shortware, and, and update the list. Right, and now let's install the package. So we will need Lucy app SQM. We only need to install this package and this will have all other packages and dependency inside. All right, so just install. This is going to take some time because the package is huge. The package installation is completed and let's try to log out from Lucy and after that log back in. So right here on network and SQM QoS, we have the main interface. So with SQM, you can enable traffic shopping, better mixing, uh, active queue land management and something like that. We have three tabs, the basic settings, the queue, disciple, and the link layer adaption. So in this one, you will need to select your interface, which will be the one interface, and you can set the download and the upload speed of the interface, and you can do some additional configuration. This is the documentation that we have, and this is a long tutorial or documentation. So first of all, we will need to measure our speed in kilobit per second and you can use like Cloudflare speed test or if you are staying nearby Singapore or you can use speedtest.net or other platform and let me try with speedtest.net and if you take a look this one is kilobit per second so we will change the setting to kilobit per second let's go to the setting button and change it to kilobit all right, and let's run it. Not bad. Let's try with another server. Let's try Viettel and see. The ping it tools MS.
Right, so let's back to the guy. So according to this documentation, it is advised to use 55% of the ISP advice speed and 95% of the speed test we solve. So let's open the calculator. All right, so let's go back to speed test and 211A56 minus 5% will be 201 so we make it round at 200 and 1000 all right so the same for the upload speed and let's put in two sorry what is that two zero one one three all right the same happened for this one and on the interface name you need to select the one interface of your openwrt router it is not the physical interface name, but the one interface. So let me save the chain first and I will explain further. For some x86 computer where you have a single network port or you have like one network port, two network port, three network port, they will be treated at a single interface. So you have ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, something like that. However, for some router such as this dealing dia 42 c 2 they only one ETH interface and let's go to the network switches. So there's only one interface and they are creating VLAN on the interface. So let's go to network and interfaces. You will see that this one is ETH 0 0.3. So this is uh, interface Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 0. So in this case, the one interface is ETH 0.2. Or you can click on the edit button just like this and check the physical setting tab. All right. So let's go back here. And where is it? Let's go back to the SQM QoS and select our one interface right so that's all uh, for the rest of the configuration we can leave it at default as i have mentioned sqm is the combination of traffic scheduling and active qlan management so this will be decided how your network package are prioritizing for upload and download and the QIN disciple we will be using for this setup will be cake. All right. So FQ code is the old QIN disciple and cake is the new one. And for the setup script, the Q setup script, we will be using the pi of k dot qon. So pi of k's qon has a traffic shopper and three classes with different priority for traffic. And this is good to go. Or else you can try to do a reading on this documentation, right? So this is uh, the very detailed documentation and you can select your own configuration that you wish. So you can also tick on this checkbox to do some further tuning. For example, you can change the setting for explicit contraction notification. So let's say that your one interface is sending the traffic, the packet to your routers and we're having a bottleneck at the one interface. So the, the routers or the SQM will notify the, the upstream ISP that, hey, we have a traffic tram right here. So please slow down or stop sending your package because we cannot process it. So this will be the ENC. So this is what they are going to do, All right? So we have the ENC for inbound and outbound. So right now we are using it at default. So according to the documentation, it is advised that if your network speed is slow, then better you turn it up. But for me, I will just leave it at default, right? So that's all about the second tab. And the last one is a link layer adaption. So we have different of link layer. Uh, now today we have uh, Ethernet um, and then PPPoE over Ethernet and we have um, ADSL and ATM, so extra tries. So each of the protocol or the link layer have its own package size, right? So 
why we need to convey this. The reasons we need to configure link adaption is that we can let our traffic shopper know the actual size of the packet so that it can calculate how long the packet takes to send and receive. And of course, when the packet travel between your router to the upstream ISP routers, and it will surely add overhead to the package. So overhead is the time needed to compute or to process a package on the network. Let's take a simple example. When you are sending a pixel to the shipping company, you will need to add some label on top of it. Is that correct? So when the packet, the shipping company move the pixel from one place to another, maybe to, they need to use another partner and the other delivery partner will also add some label or something on top of it. So the same thing for our network. Here we have Ethernet with overhead. Select for VDSL2 and we have ATM for ADSL1, ADSL3. So if you have any hint, you need to select the overhead, which is 44. So better we put a, a big value instead of like underestimate this, all right? So here is the advanced link layer option which you can customize on your own. And uh, for this, we have a very detailed documentation from here as well. So it say that for package overhead to 44, if you use any kind of DSL or ADSL. So if you are using the VDSL2, you can put it to 26. If you have a cable modem with a coaxial cable connector, you can try 22 bytes. And if you're not sure, you can put 44. So this will be for the router, for the one interface where the router directly connected to the upstream ISP, right? So if your router is behind another router, maybe you need to do some further tuning on that, okay? So basically that's all. And now let's go back to our SQM QoS and let's check it one, check it one. So everything looks ready and hit save and apply. But this is not all. We have just configured our SQM QoS, but we haven't enabled it. So let's tick this one to enable and save and apply. And this is not the end, okay? because we need to enable the auto startup for the QoS. So let's go to system, startup, and enable. Enable what? SQM. Just right here, click on the enable button. So it say that we set the link to 95% of the actual speed, but you can slowly increase that. So right now we are setting at 95%. So you can try to increase it to 96%. And let's do some like network monitoring using ping or trade route or playing game while you are doing the tuning. And if there is no lag, then you can try to increase the link, the downlink or the uplink speed to maybe 96 and then 97 or maybe 98. And when you see the latency, the lag, the just uh, increase, then we can stop and we say, okay, this is the limit. So this is how you tune the download and the upload link or the queue. All right. But anyway, we will need a average uh, fast speed in order to process all of this uh, package and all of this application. How to say beside that, uh, we also need to have a separate interface. In this case, we have only one physical network interface and they are creating VLAN on top of it. So as you can see, we have ETS1, ETS, I'm sorry, ETS0.1.2.3 and we are running our network on a virtual VLAN. So the traffic, the speed is not as fast as expected, All right? So we need to do some further turning. You can refer to documentation from here and here. And I will put them in the video description so that you can do your own reading. And that's all about this uh, basic SQM. So in the next video, I will show you how to control the speed for your LAN interface, for your LAN device, for your Wi-Fi device with this SQM. So 
As always, if there are any question or idea, feel free to leave it in the comment section. And of course, I know that you guys have been suggesting a lot of great idea and a lot of requests have been sent to me. However, I don't have much time to, to do all the videos. So of course, I will note it down, but I will try to do it one by one. Right, so once again, thanks for watching. And if you see the video is nice, please like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.